happiness and personally, I feel Ben Davison is to blame. If Anthony Joshua is planning to ex so sad that a trainer like Ben Davison couldn't correct obvious mistake glaring in the first round when switching shots, in my opinion, this is the time to make Deontay Wilder's fight and forget any rematch clause. Please watch till the end as I analyze obvious mistakes Anthony Joshua made and Ben Davison failed to correct. Dubua stepped in with a perfectly timed right hand, catching Joshua flush and Oleksandr Yusik, we've seen similar lapses. His tendency to keep his hands low or be slow to react after throwing punches has been a recurring issue. This lack of defensive awareness has led to him absorbing more punches than necessary, and against a puncher like Dubua, that's a recipe for disaster. What's baffling to many is why this flaw wasn't fully addressed in Joshua's camp. Ben Davison, who has worked with top fighters and is known for his tactical, but at the elite level of heavyweight boxing, defense is just as critical. From the start, Joshua's jab was meant to control the pace and keep Dubua at a distance. Joshua seemed hesitant, often throwing it without purpose or precision. This lack of a well-structured game plan for his jab made it easy for Dubua to time his counters, protecting yourself from the ones coming back. Hopefully, Joshua will take this loss as an opportunity to refine his defense, correct those long-standing mistakes, and return stronger. For now, the knockout is a reminder that even the smallest defensive lapse can lead to devastating consequences in the heavyweight division. Another major issue was Joshua's poor defense after throwing his punches. Not only did he drop his hands, but his reflexes in getting back into a defensive stance were slow. He failed to anticipate Dubua, counters, and didn't adjust his positioning after throwing punches. Management and defensive lapses culminated in disaster. Joshua threw a jab once again dropping his hands after the punch and failing to move out of Dubua range. Dubua saw the opportunity and landed a devastating right hand, perfectly timed to exploit Joshua's defensive negligence. The punch connected cleanly, sending Joshua to the canvas and effectively ending the fight. It's important to ask why these issues weren't corrected in Joshua's camp, especially with a trainer like Ben Davison who is known for his tactical expertise. Joshua's inability to adjust his timing to properly manage the distance, and to protect himself after throwing punches are fundamental flaws that could have been addressed in training. Moreover, Joshua's jab, a key weapon in any boxer's arsenal, lacked purpose. Instead of using it to control the fight, set up combinations, or keep Dubua at bay, Joshua seemed unsure of how to implement it effectively. There was no clear plan for how to use the jab beyond keeping Dubua away momentarily, which wasn't enough to prevent the onslaught of power punches that followed. Dubua, sensing this uncertainty, continued to press forward. He read Joshua's intentions, understood the timing, and punished him for every mistake. Joshua's defensive lapses, combined with his failure to close the distance or impose a proper game plan with his jab, opened the door for Dubua to land the knockout punch. The fight between Daniel Dubua and Anthony Joshua will undoubtedly be remembered for one thing the devastating knockout. But what many fight fans and analysts will point out is how this knockout could have been prevented. For months leading up to the fight, Anthony Joshua's camp focused on sharpening his skills, with renowned trainer Ben Davison playing a key role. Despite this, there was a glaring flaw that was never fully corrected. Joshua's tendency to drop his hands during exchanges and his overall defensive lapses. We'll need to reevaluate these aspects of his training if they want to see him return stronger and more prepared for future challenges. For now,